So we're going to bring this diuretic discussion on home with a, uh, let me pause my movie here, with a, uh, with a discussion on ADH antagonists. ADH antagonists. ADH is simply uh, antidiuretic hormone, also known as vasopressin. Um, A angio vasopressin. Uh, ADH. ADH is going to be a drug uh, that's going to have a lot of effects. And one of the effects is going to be on the kidney. So we're going to talk about drugs that are going to be ADH receptor antagonists. So they're going to antagonize, they're going to block the receptor for ADH. Uh, the prototypical drugs that we'll be talking about are going to be conivaptan and lithium. Just as a little aside, if you hear Vaptan, think ADH antagonist. Vaptan ADH antagonist. Um, and associated with ADH, ADH simply puts aquaporins onto the collecting duct. Aquaporins, uh, aqua stands for water, pour, like a pore. So it creates a pore for water and, and water will um, come back in. And I'll show you how the mechanism works there. So let's talk about that MOA, the mechanism of action. So we've got a cell. And this one's going to be, uh, here's a lumen. Here's the interstitial. We're going to talk about the collecting duct. When you hear ADH, antidiuretic hormone, I want you to think collecting duct, because that is going to be where all of this takes place. So here's a collecting duct cell. We've got another cell here, another cell here, um, but we're going to take a look at this one. So we've got a receptor, because remember that the point of this discussion, ADH receptor antagonists. So here's our ADH receptor, and we're going to antagonize this. But let's talk about normal physiology. Typically, ADH, so the vasopressin or ADH antidiuretic hormone is going to come and bind to its receptor. That receptor uh, is going to be called the V2 receptor and what it is is it's going to stick some stuff called aquaporins onto the luminal side of the membrane. The aquaporins, like I've already said, are a pore for water. So we have all this water coming down so uh, here's our picture, here's our glomerulus filters, here's our proximal convoluted, descending, loop, ascending, distal convoluted, and now we're in the collecting duct. And that collecting duct will eventually lead to a ureter, that ureter will lead to the bladder and then the uh, excretion. Oops, didn't mean to do that, let me just draw this in really quick. Okay, so what we're dealing with is right here. We've already reabsorbed stuff I'll just say solute stuff here in the proximal, down in the descending, in the ascending, in the DCT. Everything that's left right now is going to be like water, sodium, uh, maybe potassium, maybe chloride. Uh, so we have a whole bunch of, just for our sake, we have water and sodium. Because water always follows where sodium goes. So if we have sodium, we most likely have water. So here we go, in the lumen. It's destined for the ureter. We're about to lose it. We're in the collecting duct. This is our last chance to get it back. So ADH, antidiuresis hormone, antidiuretic hormone. What does the name tell you? Well, it says that you're not going to diurese. You're not going to pee. You're antidiuresing hormone. So that means we're going to somehow decrease peeing. And we're doing that by increasing these aquaporins. Those aquaporins will be like water pores. The water will be able to go through these pores and get reabsorbed. So we have less water in our urine. We'll have more solute, however, so our increased osmolality of our urine will increase. We'll increase our urine osmolality because we're decreasing our water. We're reabsorbing our water. This is our last ditch effort. We're in our collecting tubule. The ADH will, or will agonize the V2 receptor. It'll, it'll stimulate the aquaporin release to the membrane here. These aquaporins cause water reabsorption. So these V2 receptors, uh, the V2 receptor is found on the interstitial side 
of, of the membrane, while the aquaporins are found on the luminal side. Uh, just as a little aside, I said V2 receptor because you have like the V1 and the V3, and that's going to be found, like the V1 will be found on like the blood vessel, um, the V3 may be found on the pituitary, etc. We're talking about the V2 receptor, and this will be dealing with the kidney. Because remember, ADH is also known as vasopressin or angiovasopressin. Uh, that'll be on the blood vessels as well. It'll affect the pituitary. Um, however, this one is affecting the kidney, the V2 receptor. And then these aquaporins, just as a little aside as well, aquaporin 2 channels. Uh, not a big deal. So when do we actually use these uh, ADH receptor antagonists? So uh, over here, what we'll be doing is we'll be antagonizing it. We'll be creating a block. So we have this ADH receptor antagonist, also known as like a conivaptan, like our Vaptan drugs. What they'll do is they'll come in and they'll block this. They'll create a little shield. Our ADH can't work, so we can't reabsorb water. We'll pee it out. So it's a diuretic. So where do we get these ADH receptor antagonists? When do we use these drugs? And there's really main, one main use where we'll actually use the ADH antagonists. And that's going to be SIADH. Now, what in the heck does that mean? Syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. So we have syn syndrome. So we'll have symptoms. We'll have a syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. We'll have increased ADH secretion. So if we have increased ADH, we'll have increased ADH effects. We'll have blood vessel effects. We'll have kidney effects. And in the kidney, like I said, ADH is gonna reabsorb water. So if we have SIADH, we'll have really concentrated uh, urine because we'll be reabsorbing all of this water if we have increased ADH. Um, so we'll use the receptor antagonists if we have too much ADH and we'll antagonize the effects, pretty much making ADH not useful in the kidney. All right, so that, uh, that'll that conclude our discussion on diuretics. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Um, I always enjoy getting comments, getting uh, likes. Likes always build up my ego. Um, and also subscribing also builds up my ego, but also it'll give you great videos in the future. Thanks for paying attention, and uh, have a good day. Thanks, guys.